Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy, which really they're the same thing. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Hmm, that feels good. <sighs> Today is Monday, June 14th. It's a warm morning here in Santa Fe already uh, 74 degrees at 8 15. I know that that is nothing compared to where some of you live but uh, June is our hottest month and so it always um hottest and driest which are interchangeable. Um, so yeah it's something to us. Uh, welcome to the last two weeks of me finishing revising and writing this book. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, I don't like pulling it this close and I know it probably seems like I always pull it this close but this feels closer than I had planned closer than I would like but um, so it goes. I don't even remember where I ended up on Friday whatever the hell day that was. Let's see here. Oh, I'm on page 146 of 284 on the revision. Um, and writing a I started writing a scene that needs to be added. Uh, I think that's going to be good to do. So, um, yeah. In, in a wonderful world, in the best of all possible worlds, wonderful book by Karen Lord, if you guys haven't read it. Um, oh. Well, it's a pretty major bird cheapage here. Wonder what that's about. You guys hear that? There's a nest up there with uh, little birdies must be about to fledge. They're so loud. I'm not quite sure where they are, but <laughs> seemed like they were on top of me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so in the best of all possible worlds, I have uh, probably I could finish revising what I have so far today and tomorrow. Um, it's certainly possible um, but at the rate I've been going I did sort of calculate my my current speed and at the rate I've been going it will take me until Thursday. Um, which makes it really tight but I'm not going to panic. Don't panic. I have my towel. I am. I'm ready. <sighs> but I had a good weekend um, adhered to my schedule. Uh, I really do try not to go into that full out panic mode of um, you know working nonstop which is how some authors do things. I just straighten my barrette there. You guys will have noticed I'm in ponytail mode. That's the heat. We do have air conditioning but um kind of get warm anyway. We actually don't turn it down all that low. Uh, there was a point at which Suzanne Johnson I haven't heard from Suzanne Johnson in a while. I wonder how she's doing. She she was having an argument with her mother who was living with her about uh, the proper setting for the air conditioning and she wanted to know what settings we all put our air conditioning at. You know and it's interesting because in the south with the humidity uh, people put it much lower than in places where you don't have humidity because a huge piece of having air conditioning is to dehumidify. So um, in previous years where it got hot in May and we got more used to it we'd been we would keep our air conditioning at like 84 Um, and I know that my folks in Tucson keep theirs at like 80 because you don't for them it becomes a thing of where they don't want to do this whole going from oven to refrigeration. Um, This year we've been keeping it more at like 78 and I think that's because it's um we hadn't gotten used to the heat yet. 
but and when I say keep it at, I mean when we turn it on. Like we don't turn it on until about two or three in the afternoon, and then turn it off around eight o'clock and open up the windows again. This is complicated by by the smoke. We've been having the forest fires um, mostly in Arizona. There's one down in the Gila Wilderness in New Mexico. But um, we have bluer skies today. It's nice. So we'll see. That was all a tangent. What was I really talking about? Oh, Suzanne Johnson. No, no, that was air conditioning related. Here, my ponytail I had to fix. Tragically distracted. Sorry. Oh, maybe that I had a good weekend. I mean, I, I do try to um, keep those days off. That's a for me, a critical part of my process is not to overdo, especially for long-term sustainability, because um, some writers do the thing where they work, 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 work up to the deadline and they do balls out and, you know, burn the candle on both ends and totally deplete the well, whichever metaphor you like. And then they uh, crash, you know, and take like months off. And I know I've talked about that, my fantasy of like, wouldn't it be cool to like go hang out in my house on the Caribbean and watch the cabana boys on the dolphins swimming together through the waves. <laughs> uh, but what I need to do is start another book right away. I'm seeing a dead leaf on a plant over here. One thing about being on video is I don't get up and screw around so much with the plants. But uh, yeah, why is that little branch dead? It's just one, so it's not a big deal. Sometimes they can be small indicators of bigger things to come, however. Yeah, so um, worked till that, that's the other thing I've really been trying to do is on um, is not work past five o'clock unless I have something scheduled. Uh, once it hits five o'clock, I do try to get up from my desk and have my day be over. David and I were talking about this, um, you know, like the, the thing about when you work for yourself and part of it's working from home, which I know a lot of people have been dealing with for the first time during the pandemic, but a lot of it's working by your working for yourself (laughs) and by yourself, um, that you tend not to have as defined boundaries. Like when I had my day job, uh, when it got to be the weekend, I was not expected to be available and online. There, there were ways in which I was expected to be available, like if there was an emergency, which were kind of annoying to me, but I didn't work on the weekends. And, and that creates a demarcation that's important uh, because I tend to do a lot of work on the weekends that isn't writing. I don't write on the weekends, but I have lots of business things that I have to take care of. And weekends are often good catch up times for that. But then that means that I don't ever have, I don't give myself full time off. And I think that's a problem. So this weekend, I, I still did things both days, but I was trying to be more, um, leisurely about it. So on Saturday, I had Lyra. We listened to the fabulous Jennifer Armentrout uh, talk about uh, expectations and writing what you want to write. It's a really great talk. It's very mean the second time I've heard it and it's it's very meaningful to me. Uh, It was particularly fun to be able to get to listen to this because the first time I heard it was back in the fall at romance author mastermind. And it was partly Jennifer's talk about sticking with something that she believed in that her editors and agent didn't believe in, which became, uh, Oh, I'm not going to remember the name. It's, it's her new big series, her fantasy romance series. Um, and how that, you know, emancipated her because she was writing something that she wanted to write as opposed to what they were telling her to write. And, and I hate to say that because I feel like there's this impression about trad publishing that, that you don't get to write what you want to, that you, um, that they tell you what and how to write. And that's, 
it's not the case. One of the things Jennifer was talking about was that a lot of these things that she'd been doing that she wasn't enjoying doing, she could have said no. That, you know, but she's, but we get into this place where we want to please people, you know, and she was talking about, is that a female thing? Um, but, you know, it's like, you don't want to be the diva. You don't want to be difficult. You don't want to be hard to work with. Uh, but at the same time, if you're not enjoying what you're writing, or if you're not like following your passion, following the thing that's really calling to you, then, then it can make you unhappy. And for me, Dark Wizard was absolutely that project. Those of you who have been listening for a long time, you know, have been there every step of the way for the travails on that. And travails, travails, travails. Um, you know, I loved writing that book. That book wanted to be written. I ended up writing the whole book without, um, when I'd been planning to do something else. And so when Agent Sarah didn't like the book and didn't want to take it out on submission, I got something in my eye here, something felt dropped in. Um, it was partly Jennifer L. Armentrout's talk. Always have to remember that she's Jennifer L. Armentrout because there's another Jennifer Armentrout. Uh, I, I must be a little bit spacey still. Probably just book brain. I'm going to have book brain for the next two weeks. You guys could just like not listen <laughs> if the book brain bothers you. Uh, wow. I just like totally spaced on my train of thought there. So, oh, with Dark Wizard. No. Um, it was it was being able to think back to that that Jennifer had experienced much of the same kinds of things that helped me go through it. I mean, it also helped that I had Grace and Dorinda telling me that it was a good book and that, uh, you know, what, maybe even just that, that more than that, it was a good book, that they loved this book, that they loved this book like I love this book. And, you know, it's hard when, you know, because I really do trust my agent and it's hard when your agent says, uh, really damning things about a project that you love. So it, it was cool because those of you uh, who watch my social media and so forth know that on Friday I had that book bub featured deal. Nope. Parent bird is back feeding those chicks. I'm just trying to figure out where that nest is. It's over here somewhere. With the adobe walls, the uh, sound can be a little deceptive. It bounces. Anyway, um, so I had the book bub featured deal, which is great. It's I've been trying for years to get a book bub featured deal, and this is the first time I've got one, and I got it for Dark Wizard, and it was it was amazing. It did amazing, you guys. Uh, it hit. Um, it was in the Amazon top 100 Kindle of the entire Kindle store, which is amazing. I think that's a career first for me. It um, was number one in like all of its subcategories. I did take a screenshot of it being ahead of Sandman and Dark Fantasy uh, because I have a deep and passionate love for Sandman and for Neil Gaiman and uh, alert social media followers among you notice that I quoted the Tori Amos song, which, uh, I, I loved it when I, cause I loved Tori Amos. And when I heard her song, I was, you know, like one of those things where I sat up bright and went, man, you will be hanging out with the dream King. It's like, she's talking about Sandman. It's so cool when you make those connections, uh, you know, and I, and I see you all comment sometimes about being, um, loving seeing that like authors know each other and that we have conversations on Facebook and so forth. It's, it's really cool when you see the artists that you love having relationships with each other, you know, because everybody's people, right. And it's neat seeing that people peopling. 
So, um, so my point, and I did have one, is that, I mean, I sold a lot of copies of Dark Wizard over the weekend, you guys, and it's, um, I, I'm actually just thoroughly giddy. I am so delighted. Actually, I, now I'm feeling slightly weepy. I'm so excited about it. Uh, and a lot of pre-orders for Bright Familiar, so I need to finish writing it. And, um, yeah, it, so it was particularly vindicating, and I got to tell Jennifer that when we had that talk, because I'd been, at the beginning of the Lyra meetings, we do our, you know, like updates and successes and so forth. And so I told them, I'm like, okay, so, you know, right now as we sit here, my book is in the top 100 of the Kindle store. As far as I know, it, the highest it got was 64. And I and then it dropped out again, but that's fine. There's a lot of competition for that top 100. Uh, and I'm still sitting pretty in the subcategories, uh, which is nice for a book that was, it was on sale for 99 cents, still is through today. Um, and it is, um, yeah, it's really, it's hard to compete with the books that are in Kindle Unlimited in the Kindle store because those are free. You know, people pay their subscription, but they're free. So I'm, um, uh, yeah, it, it was nice to be able to tell Jennifer, you know, thank you. Your words really inspired me and helped me keep going on this project and uh yeah it's, it's awesome so so i did lyra on saturday i did take care of a few things but i tried to go more into the instead of following my list sort of doing the things that needed taking care of most or that i felt like doing and so i sort of puttered around i sat out in the grape arbor for the lyra meeting that was nice sat right here and then yesterday i did some stuff like laundry and then i met um Megan Mulry, my darling friend, uh, at the tea house up on Canyon Road for lunch. And we had a bottle of Prosecco to celebrate and a really delicious lunch too. I had this amazing sandwich of um, chicken and brie and jam that was a panini and so it was melty. It reminded me of um, Jennifer Eastep her book capture the crown is coming out in july and her heroine's favorite food is like this melted cheese and apricot sandwich this was like that only hers doesn't have chicken in it but still um i'm i'm say i should say nice things about megan because she told me that she tries to listen to my podcast after she see me because she feels like she pops up <laughs> in conversation. I think she really just wants to know what I'm saying about her, which is fair enough. I was having to explain to her that the, she said that on Instagram, it craps out after a minute and it's like, yeah, I know you have to click through the profile. Uh, for some reason, yeah, you know, those struggles with IGTV, that's part with partly the problem with switching over to YouTube. I should just put that note on there every time. I just never feel like typing it out. Maybe I should do like a, um, I should just have a, have it cop someplace where I can copy and paste it. Cause that's what I do is I grab the, the blog description and copy paste it into Instagram. Always looking for those shortcuts. So, um, so I, you may be disappointed me again, cause I don't have, uh, anything to say in particular about you, except that, um, it was really lovely having, having lunch and it was kind of hot, but we sat outside under the umbrellas and it was, um, just delightful. Uh, we talked a lot about friendships. We talked about saying no to people and, and not apologizing when someone is upset with us for something that is not our fault. And it was, it was a great, I always have good conversations with Megan and she is a, uh, a treasured friend. So there you go, Megan, there's your reward for having listened through if you did. Uh, yeah, it was, um, it was a perfect Sunday afternoon. Uh, I, she's house sitting and I went with her, uh, to see the house and we sat out on the patio with the beautiful view and we drank a little bit more champagne because obviously we needed to. And it was, um, it reminded me of times when I've been on vacation in Santa Fe before I moved here. And you know, that's one of the things is you move to a beautiful place and then you don't always do the vacation type things in it. 
And so it's, it was really nice to do that. I'm trying to give myself more of those downtime things. So, um, before I go, I'll do earrings. Today's earrings, I think are really interesting. I'm pretty sure these were my grandmother's earrings. They are simple posts. We're into the post earrings now and they are rectangles. I'm not even sure. This might be a crystal in the middle. It's a rectangular crystal that's faceted and it looks metallic. And, um, I think that these are really cool earrings, cool enough that I've never gotten rid of them and they look pretty on, but, and I keep feeling like one day there's going to be the perfect outfit for these earrings, but I would have to, I, I mean, they look pretty good if I have my hair up like this, but, um, otherwise they get lost in the tenebrous death depths. And if I'm going to wear something that's blingy, I usually go for more blingy, you know, like Friday's earrings blingy. So it's sort of like, what am I going to wear understated blingy? Right? I should give them to Megan. Megan is the queen of understated blingy. All right. I am going to go off and do my things. Uh, I will remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network, and you will find more podcasts that you love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.